Somebody is selling a Conker's Bad Fur Day development slash prototype cartridge on eBay for 66,000 British pounds or around 86,912 US dollars. And there is a ton of drama over it. Hey everyone, I'm your host Tony and this is Hard for Games Gaiden. It's our side show where we talk about gaming news, gaming topics, and kind of whatever happens to be on my mind on a given week. It's also the show where I don't show my face because, as I've said before, if I shot this, lit this, threw up the green screen, edited it, all that stuff, by the time it got to you, this would not be topical anymore. So back to Conker's Bad Fur Day. So there's a lot of hearsay about this topic, so let's start with the facts. There's a Conker's Bad Fur Day development slash prototype cart on eBay, and it's going for an insane amount of money. The owner claims that it's undumped and untested. So as you can see, there's artwork on the cart, and on the back it says BAFTA, uh, property of BAFTA, which is an award show in the UK. Uh, British Academy of Film and Television Arts, and this also covers games, which is pretty cool. So why is this absolutely insane? Well, there are actually a couple of different reasons for this. And here's also kind of where we start to mix in facts and fiction. A lot of this was garnered uh, from conversations with the owner on Assembler Games and various forums. Uh, and there were also some accusations that the owner had scammed people in the past, which I don't personally know how to verify. I'm not saying they're true. I'm not saying they're not. It's just a thing that happened on the internet. More on all of that in a moment. So the story goes, allegedly, that the woman who purchased this prototype just happened to be at the right place at the right time. She was at a video game store, as we often all are, and there was an individual there who was trying to just offload his or her N64 collection. The clerk or owner or whoever was accepting the trade-ins wouldn't accept one particular cart because it looked weird, it looked potentially like bootlegged or, or homemade or something like that, and of course, that was the dev cart. On the one hand, it's like, can you blame this person for thinking that it might not be real? I mean, I can, but uh, like most people don't really know what development carts look like, so it's kind of um, very unfortunate for that person that they did not know uh, because they didn't accept it, and apparently this woman had purchased it from this individual who was trying to offload their collection. Again, this part, hearsay, who knows, maybe she found it in a gutter, whatever. Moving on to Assembler Games, the owner had posted there and tried to get info on the cart. And everyone there, rightfully so, warned her. Because, I mean, if you go on Assembler, these people, I mean, they know what they're doing for the most part, right? I mean, there's some great information you can gain from that website. It's a wonderful, wonderful website. Uh, if you haven't been there, definitely check it out. But these people basically tried to warn her against booting it. Do not boot the cart under any circumstances, make sure that it's properly dumped and preserved first, which was very good advice. And you see, N64 dev carts are particularly fickle, right? They can delete very easily. Uh, some will delete themselves after the system's powered off. It's like a sort of a kill switch sort of thing. So it's like, all right, you get to uh, take a look at this game, but then it's going to erase itself as sort of a preventative measure for pre-released games getting out into the public at that point in time. So you can see why dumping and preserving the contents of this particular cartridge would be so very important. Also on the forums, some individuals accused her of scamming people previously, and I I don't, I'm not gonna take a stance on that. I really have no idea uh, whether that's true or not. Um, I'm not sure, so I'm not really gonna comment on it. Again, it's just a thing that happened on the internet. Also on these forums is a glowing review of Hard for Games, and you can read it yourself. So anyways, ignoring all of this expert advice from Assembler Games, she listed the item on eBay as is, specifically stating that it needed to be dumped. And now the listing is up to just about a bajillion dollars. Good for her, right? Uh, well, that's kind of where the extra drama comes in, because rumor has it that those are probably fake bids. And I'm leaning towards believing that. Well, here's the thing, and here's where some extra drama kind of seeps into this. 
A lot of rumors going around that these are all fake and inflated bids. And I'm leaning towards believing this. And I'll explain why. Regardless of the motive for inflating her auction, you know, possibly upset over not dumping it first, I don't know. Let's go ahead and use some logic to determine whether or not the fake bidding makes sense. So first off, N64 carts, development carts, do generally go for a good amount of cash on eBay. But this amount is just insane, especially for the game. I understand that Conker's Bad Fur Day is a very beloved title, and Rare is an amazing developer. They created so much good content for the N64. But for this to go for $86,000, is absolutely insane. You gotta think about it this way. Nintendo World Championships cart, right? That is a an absolute holy grail for the NES. I understand that it's not dev, but I'm, I'm still gonna use it as an example. That goes for like, what, between 20 and 30,000, something like that, sometimes more, sometimes less, very condition dependent, whether it's a gray cart, gold cart, whatever. But that's 20 to $30,000. This is $86,000. It just shouldn't be this high. It just doesn't make any sense. So let's dive a little bit deeper. You can't tell by looking at the board, but the art is definitely Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Now, I haven't seen a ton of N64 dev cards, but my in my experience, generally dev cards that have beta or debug versions of the games on them have chicken scratch handwriting and poorly printed labels over top. So think about what H4G has seen so far and what you've seen on our channel. Mega Man 64, debug version. Hercules, debug version. Daikatana, final run. You see the pattern, right? So Daikatana uh, had finalized artwork and it was a, a final run of the game. You know, likely to go off to some reviewer magazine or whatever it's less likely that they'd slap final artwork on a cart that's still being revised internally in their company, right? It just doesn't make sense that you would even bother doing that. I'm not saying it's never happened, but I just don't think the logic is there. So that brings us to BAFTA. This was likely a final or near final run version of the game for review purposes. Right? Does for your consideration mean anything to you, right? They'd go ahead and ship these things off so they could be reviewed in their final or near final form. Because it was probably a review copy for BAFTA, that's actually good in a way because it probably doesn't have that auto delete or something like akin to that. You wouldn't be like, oh, check this out for review and then, oh, by the way, don't ever power it down. <laughs> you can only play it once, right? That probably doesn't make sense. Uh, again, I'm not saying that would never happen. I'm just saying, I mean, the logic isn't quite there. You know, maybe someone will dump it one day and I'll be totally wrong about that. Maybe it's a, it's a true prototype, but who knows? These are just best guesses here. You know, however, I, I would like to imagine that any collector worth their salt would probably know, based on the artwork and the fact that it says BAFTA on the back, that it's a final run, meaning that they probably wouldn't spring that kind of cash for something that they know isn't really like a beta or, a, you know, a prototype. You also have to keep in mind that this is an auction for an untested item, right? So would you, you know, ask yourself, would you personally spend 66,000 pounds, 80 some th thousand dollars, US dollars on an untested item? Would you spend a thousand dollars? on an untested item? Would you spend $500 on an untested item knowing that you can't fix it if it's broke, right? Or the data's gone? Probably, probably not. Probably you wouldn't do it. Which brings up the question, you know, why she listed it as untested and undumped? You know, maybe she didn't want to bother. Maybe she couldn't find anyone that she could trust. Or maybe she booted it and it was seemingly blank. So to cut her losses, she just pretended not to boot it up 
and just threw it up on eBay as is. I mean, there's no real way of knowing. Also, I might add, take a look at her eBay post. Like, the it's just so full of typos. <laughs> Would you spend 66,000 pounds, 86, you know, thousand US dollars or whatever on an auction that's just, like, riddled with typos? I don't know. Uh, it seems a little bit um, shady to me. So, you know, this auction is live as of recording this, and I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. You know, on the one hand, I kind of wanted to wait until the auction was over with, so that way I could kind of wrap the story up. But on the other hand, I thought it might be cool for you guys, and you might want to go to the live auction and, like, watch the numbers move around a little bit and see it while it's live. So, go ahead, take a look, enjoy. Aside from that, I hope you enjoyed my uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day footage. I don't have one of those fancy Ultra HDMI modded N64s, but I do have an RGB modded 64 with an OSSC. Uh, the OSSC is a FrameMeister alternative that actually like does line doubling and line tripling and so on uh, to increase the resolution. I like the quality so far. Uh, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And also let me know what you think about this whole eBay drama in the comments below as well. So everybody, thank you again for watching. Thank you for subscribing. It really does mean a lot and help us out. Also a giant shout out to Andrew who helped me do research for this particular episode. He was also the individual who lent us the WrestleMania SNES prototype card. So thank you, sir. Very much appreciated. And we will see you all next time. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share, and we will see you guys next time.